one million dollar grand prize in three very creative modes which means today's really all about fun and who better to have some fun with than none other you got monster sundown over at the cast move take it away fellas And boys and girls, Jonesies, Bonesies, and everyone in between, welcome to the Fortnite World Cup Creative Finals. I'm one of your casters, Sundown, joined here by Monster. Monster, how you doing today, man? Doing great. This is the moment we've all been waiting for. Ten weeks of qualifiers, and it's all coming to life. And uh, this is what we're here for. Yes, after the eight trials, now what you'll be seeing on the stage will be four sets of three matches and two never before seen maps and a little refresher coming from the creative showdown there with Sky Station Showdown. It's going to be incredible. That's right. So you guys have seen the Sky Station before. Lucky for them, you know, they get to kind of come in here, prepare, kind of prepped up. But there is so much more that is going to happen that hasn't been unveiled today. Oh, and I mean, it's good. seeing the adaptation across these sets is going to be incredible. And they're going to get a chance to revisit them at the end with a little uh, remix. But we'll get into that here in a second. Let's check out the overall scoring and how these guys are going to be competing and how they will win. So as we said, that first set is Sky Station Showdown. Junkyard Juke will be the second one. Set three will be a never before seen world run. And then set four will be the Golden Games. Now, the Golden Games will comprise of a singular match from each one of the other three with, as I said, a nice little remix on it. And the Golden Games is worth a Golden Llama, while all of the other sets are worth a singular Silver Llama. How do those Llamas add up, Monster? Yeah, you want to accumulate the most Llamas throughout each set. We're treating each set as its own uh, individual thing with a couple games in between. So they're going to get a couple runs at it, and you just want to do the best in every set get those llamas so you can take it all home. Yes, now the winner of the set will go through, and in case there is a tie, it will come down to that golden llama. The golden llama will trump all. Now let's get into the prizing, which will also determine a little bit of the scoring. We'll take a look and we'll throw that up there for you. And the way it ends up working is from top to bottom, each one of these contestants will be winning money. So everyone is a winner in there, but first place ends up deciding that, and this is per the individual matches and it's cumulative. It won't carry over through the sets but they're still taking it home at the end of the day so you definitely want to get in the top four to bump up that score yeah that's right and that is every game per match we have a big winner of course it's going to be divvied out between everyone competing but come on with the amount of games that's going on today this is incredible yes that is across 12 of matches total so tons of chances to win prizes from all of these guys. Let's take a look at the roster and all of the teams who will be competing and give you guys a quick little overview. You can see Chicken Champions led by El Rubius, Sunshine Soldiers got that one right too, Zeke, with Danyan and Achin representing as the captains, Funky Fighters with Tomoya, Cuddle Crew represented by Lachlan. But we gotta give some love to the Ravens Revenge. You can see them up there, Little Whip Warriors. We already kind of touched base with Ninja. Llama Record, uh, which you talked about a lot coming up into here, and of course the fish fam who's gonna be led by scissors and these are some of the creative kings they've been yes. able to go through run qualify a lot of them have had the world run or not world run experience excuse me but in those death runs where they were doing the qualifications but they're also some combat aspects so we've seen sky station showdown before you know there's going to be a little bit I don't want to say advantage but they might be a little more at home when you're actually firing bullets building out and trying to get those rotations in yeah, I mean, you cannot underestimate any of these teams. These guys grind, and they all play Fortnite. But let's go ahead and take a look at the format here so we can kind of see, see a run and how they take these victories. So now the VIP will be those creative captains, and they have to be the one in the capture point uncontested to score points. They will get three points per second in the initial hills, and then the first team to 1,000 points or the highest scoring team by the end. And also, the creative captains will be wielding the Infinity Blade. That Infinity Blade will be important because they have to get to the capture points. A, B, and C, which will give three points a second. And then seven minutes into the round, point D opens up where you will get about a lot, a lot more, right? 12 yeah. points a second. Four Th times that is, is what, a lot. That is what you want to, what you want to do. You want to gun for the point D on the map. That's your comeback or that's your, your lead taker. Yeah, you can see a lot change when that opens up at seven minutes. But now we're going to go in an overview. For those of you who are unfamiliar and didn't get to watch it at the summer block party, we got you. Zeke, catch us up.
This map is a collaboration between Team Evolve and Epic. Now let's break down how it all works. For this very special event, we are bringing you an exciting King of the Hill style game built in creative by Team Evolve. Eight teams of four players will start at their home base on the edge of this massive flying city. Together, they will push three capture circles, racking up points by holding them down for their team. As each team heads toward the capture points, they'll need to protect their team's VIP, who plays a key role in this game mode. If they get eliminated, they'll respawn at the team's home base. The VIP is the only player who can earn points for your team while in the capture circle, earning three points per second. They are also the only ones who can wield the Infinity Blade, which deals massive melee damage and enables the wielder to jump incredible distances. It's the rest of the team's job to make sure the VIP gets to the capture circle and stays there as long as possible without being eliminated. With three capture circles across the map, teams have to strategize to figure out which point they'll be able to hold. Pay attention to your surroundings, because if lots of teams are fighting for the same point, there could be an open circle elsewhere. Hold up. Did I say three capture circles? Actually, there's a fourth one. Partway through the match, the fourth capture circle in the center of the map will open up and will award four times more points per second than the others. But with high reward comes high risk. After each match, teams will be ranked based on how long they held the capture circles and earn overall points based on their rank in that game. Those points will be added to an overall leaderboard and at the end of six matches, the team with the most points wins. Let the showdown begin. Love seeing that and getting a quick rundown on how the teams can go about playing. Now, Monster, I have to ask you, knowing the rules now, seeing the map, seeing the teams, who is your team to watch out for? You know, early on, I thought the Little Whip Warriors and the Fish Ram were going to do good, uh, good, but hearing from the Ravens Revenge, Dotaga now, I, I'm, I'm just shifting towards Ravens Revenge here. Uh, they, they've swayed me. Their, their entrance has really swayed me. They definitely had a lot of confidence down there in Gotaga. It can be very competitive at a drop of a hat. My team to watch, the Llama Record Co, Hand of Blood, Spenos, Alex JJ Carnifex. You heard him talk about it. Three competitive veterans and a very aggressive German. That's a combination that <laughs> I want to see on Sky Station Showdown. Now, we've done a whole bunch of talking, but I know why you guys are here. You know why we're here. It's time to play some Fortnite. The Fortnite World Cup Creative Finals starts right now. And this is it. We are loading in. Everyone's hopping now. And this is, there are, they are actually familiar with this map. So we're going to see the strategies off the bat here. Let's see who can take away and break away with that early lead you saw there. Nice wide shot of all of our captains here. And here it is. Little Whip Warriors in the lead off the bat. Already you can see trades coming out now a fun fact the infinity blade wielder gets a bonus 100 health and shield So he's sitting at the 200 200 mark on top of that siphon is on if you get an elimination You get that 50 effective HP back over that makes the infinity blade very hard to take down They also get those big crescent move jumps to slam down and as you can see going on the right hand side of your screen It is creative chaos all over the place But now taking in with the little whip warriors as they're able to clean it out and ninjas trying to rotate up top. Yeah, I'm sorry to break it to you, but the Lava Record was completely pushed off of their point. And now we have ninjas going in with the Infinity Blade. What a player to wield this one right here. Oh, he's getting pushed back. Notice how he doesn't even want to get eliminated. He wants to do as much damage as possible. But is that effective? I think you just kind of reset and you go or you get up there and you start swinging. The 75 damage hit will be able to take it down. And the Lava Record Company establishes himself right back up. Now, what's going to be interesting to me is how the players utilize their building. You start with 50 wood, and then if you get an elimination, you get 25 wood directly into your inventory. So if you're able to kind of eliminate out and put pressure down, you can get some ridiculous builds, as we're already seeing on top of the blue hill. Yeah, this is actually a neck and neck race right here in the early game so far. Fish Fam, Chicken Champions, and Raven's Revenger all trading spots at the moment. And uh-oh, Sunshine Soldiers comes right on in to wipe that up and get them out of there. And nice job for Sewer. And look at the Cuddle Crew across the way just now getting their first points because they've been contested the entire time, whereas Lama Record Company has only had one team coming up towards them. Another thing to note, let's talk about the loadouts here, Monster. What are they rocking? 
They're rocking everything that you can get in the game from blue tactical AR up to that hunting rifle. So you have the long range, you have the close range, you have the AR. You kind of just pick and choose your battle, what you want to use. And the one thing you're missing that the Infinity Blade wielder does not have will be nine impulse grenades. So everyone has a bunch of mobility to be able to get up there. But you see right there, Scissor's able to cut down a bunch and get a decent amount of timing. Let's take a look at the score. Little Whip Warriors climbing up, but it's only a five second uncontested lead and they're building on it. Right now, not a lot of points have been scored, which means when that hill opens up at seven minutes, it's going to be that much more important. Yeah, this is going way better than I expected. There is no one dominant team so far. But the Little Whip Warriors are doing so great right now. There goes Ninja, and he does get traded out. Raven's Revenge kind of takes it back over. Will Gotaga squad managed to hold it down for long enough to get their, uh, you know, points in. Don't forget, he has to clear out the point. If there's someone on it, you're not going to get uh, anything. Right, and as, as soon as you're up there, teammates are not building for you, you're exposed for the entire map. Everyone else is able to see you. You can see El Rubius going in, but the double pack plus the Infinity Blade Wheeler of Hand of Blood. This Lava Record Company team is looking to go platinum with a great defense of their point. There it is, very nice. Finally starting to earn some points, trying to break that, you know, triple digit. Hand of Blood, little fun fact right there. His dog Falco is Germany's second biggest dog influencer on Instagram. That's impressive, but I That's wonder who the first biggest is now. That's like, I'm just, is there a statistic for that? Like, do you go down the line? But one thing I do want to note for Hand of Blood, look at the eliminations coming out of the Infinity Blade, already sitting on seven and being aggressive. As the more he gets that siphon going, the better he's going to be. But the Chicken Champions come out on top there. No tender defenders are going left. Able to hold the top, and now crawling their way back up there. They're only about, like, 10 seconds or so behind the Funky Fighters? Dude, wait a second. Where did the Funky Fighters come from? Suddenly they're at the top here, and the Little Whip Warriors have not managed to earn any points. Sunshine Soldiers looking to kind of ruin that festival up top, but it's Tomoya. We touched with him with Pookie early on. He said, you know what, he chose his players, you know, specifically because they're great at death runs, but it looks like they battle it out too. They're doing a very good job of making sure they go at the same time. You can see Tomoya here being patient, doing everything he can to try and find an outlet, but he doesn't want to commit before his teammates are there. He's waiting for Kuzu. There they are. Kuzu coming up with them as well. The fight is on, but we switch back over to Scissors just chopping it oh! down. But the fish fam is a sushi there as the retake happens. That is actually crazy. Watch him kind of wait there, prepare the ambush. His team comes up and they collapse on the point. And bye bye, fish fam. And notice they had enough mats to completely encycle the top, but the Infinity Blade will be able to come oh. right out. So instead, Tomoya jumps straight up to just stall out a couple every seconds because every second matters. As you see, Kutu also on eight E limbs right now. The sword player's putting in work. We have a bit of a tie up top. Funky Fighters and Fish Fam. Lama record so close as well. This is a close one for the run in the top five so far. And I like seeing the Funky Fighters using impulses out of spawn. You get nine of them, so it's great to throw them off to knock other people off the point, but use three to get a little faster. These guys are all very experienced in terms of navigating basically every part of Creative and Battle Royale, so they can use those little quick impulses to get themselves more efficient. As you see Zand go down, Susu go down, Scissors go down right there as Lachlan is just cutting them apart. But Tomoya, again, the Funky Fighters come out on top with the Infinity Blaze at least, so no points going over right now to the Cuddle Crew. Oh no, the Cuddle Crew does not have the Infinity Blade wielder here, so Clytex has to kind of hold it down for now and wait until the leader, the team captain, can get up to the top. If Lachlan gets there in time, he might be able to, but nope, they kind of lose their point of interest, unfortunately. And now Gotaga goes up and goes straight back down, not able to catch himself on the edge, so Raven's Revenge gonna have to wait a little bit before they get points, but have full control, and Gotaga unfortunately breaks some of his teammates' build there with the Infinity Blade. Yeah, you see Chappie. Chappie's from, you know, the USA. His favorite aspect of creative mode is actually 1v1 build fights, so this is why they're doing pretty good right now. And they kind of close it up. Looks like the Cuddle Crew has come back, but the Fish Bam is here to ruin that entire party. Can they shut it down? And Scissors survives just for a bit more. And again, you see every single time the Funky Fighters go up, it is never a solo person. It is always two, most of the time three. They get control and then they immediately, immediately box up. But while we've been talking about them, let's check in back with the scoring as we're now right around the third mark in a minute out 
from that 12 point per second circle. And Ninja's team, the Little Whip Warriors, are Little Whipping all over as Tomoya goes up, comes back down, and the Xing Xing was not enough. Cuddle Crew takes him down. I actually love that shot. You don't see anyone else really utilizing the, uh, the dive straight up into the air to kind of disengage off the pressure. Ninja's doing a great job chopping up here. He's already at eight of limbs. That, never mind, make that nine. That was good. Taga who went down right there. And they finally get another run at, you know, advancing the lead here. And they are slaying out, too. Yes. You see every single one of them almost to the double digit marks. But uh, Taco, hello. Don't that peek. was your head. Yeah, you got to be careful because, hey, if all you're doing is sitting there rifling, that's fine. Somebody's going to take a hunting rifle and make you pay. Lachlan goes up. MSYB is just behind him, and Lachlan is able to take that one over. Taz is trying to do everything again, and he does get Lachlan. So good delay coming out from there, but opening up about a 20-second lead. But here we go. Three, two, one. Middle point is open. That's 12 points per second, and right off of the bat, we see Kanoku heading towards the impulse. Oh. is going out, and a swing and a miss there with the Superman jump from Ninja not quite gonna get it as Rubius and Hammer in the circle right away. Rubius under fire but Ninja under fire. Who will take it? Rubius has the better sword on the day and then immediately taken out. This is chaos. Whoever's the last one here is probably gonna be the most successful but remember you need your sword rear that your captain has to be there. If Lachlan isn't there it's not even worth fighting for so Claytex doesn't care. He's trying to pick up that Elim counter and he's on it. He's Playing some good defense there. Down goes Hand of Blood. No points for the Llama record anymore. And they actually use that. Just a couple seconds put them all the way back up to second place. And two of the Kudoku right now have combined for 31 eliminations, but they're not converting it into points. They're currently sitting at the bottom. 189 Little Whip Warriors do still have a lead, but it's already been cut down. And just as I say it, with the middle hill, Funky Fighters almost take it away. Rare goes right on over. And you see any amount of time in that middle hill is so efficient. I'm actually loving that little strat right there. They hold a, uh, hold a point, then aim out to where these players spawn in and kind of move moving from just kind of pressure them back. Yeah, so that's when you need somebody with a hunting rifle to start taking shots and saying, hey, pick on somebody else. If you look this way, you're going to have to respawn because if you can get tags, great. But if you don't convert them and, and into anything, it's not worth it. As I just kind of stuttered because Carnifix is sitting on 23 eliminations, hand of blood on 14 right there. Oh that's God. why the Llama Record Company is ahead right now. Yes, and they were using that 4X bonus on Capture Point D, which is right in the middle. It only appears after the seven minute mark. So now that we only have five left in the game, it's up to whoever can hit that 1,000 first or the timer runs out. But at this pace, I think the Fish Fam, the Funky Fighters, or the Llama Records are probably gonna take it here. Yeah, the Sunshine Soldiers are also racking up points quickly. What's interesting to see is the Fishman are pretty much now uncontested as everyone has tunneled in on that center hill. But once you get later into the game, when you need to kind of go up a little bit more, consistent points end up winning out because everyone will turn their attention to the 12 points per second. You'll have impulses going down there, random hunting rifle shots, builds 24-7 because they see that tick happening. And look, as I say, all the sword players are down there, two of them going off the attack shotguns being thrown up walls everywhere but it doesn't matter points aren't being scored right now yeah they're trying so hard to get all the bonus points that the fish fam is just like stealing away the lead right now but also remember if their teammates pick up elims you get matched straight to your point uh into your inventory so they're able to fortify up there that's why they're just slowly growing and you can actually fortify to prevent the impulses from going in or Kind of a wall to toss it in as you see Hand of Blood picking up his 16th Elim, but hey, Scissors is chilling. Yeah, Pumpernickel it up, man. Pumpernickel it up. Yeah, let him know. <laughs> let him know. There we go. He's saying, hey, you guys will stick to our strategy. Let's see if somebody uh -oh. goes to contest it. There it is right away. They go up, but all four of them. You don't want to run into this. They're ready and waiting. They know they have the lead right now. Oh, he's <laughs> holding a trophy. Got Look at him looking around. He's telling him to let him know, man. And that's what it's all about. They've opened up a 100 plus point lead, but no contestant because everyone is tunneling on the bottom. Uh oh. And I like this now. Now they're turning their attention outwards. Other teams kind of realize wait a second. They're just up there scoring. 
Like, what can you do in this instance? They see the other scores. That leaderboard is running for them. What they have to do, if you're the Lama Record Company, you hold the middle and lock it down it. for that time. And then the second you get the lead, start running at the fish fam. Don't let them come anywhere near any point. Nobody else is going to catch you unless they get the middle. Everyone's attention is there right now. And the Lama Record Company now has the 100-point lead back in the span of just 10 seconds. They let their it's guard gone. down one time, and suddenly Lama Record takes the lead as if fish fam wasn't just farming all those points nope fish fam no longer have a free point it is up to everyone to stop the lemma uh, the llama record company here because hand of blood has 17 elims and he's going for the middle now he's got his team ready let's see what he's gonna do hits the vent goes right in nice and sneaky oh he's still waiting look at the big brain plays comes out the collateral right there and it's all his the center point is his to earn points now sundown it's so close it's just a few more gotta stop him. In. one more goes over and that's it llama record co takes the first match hand of blood spenos alex jj and carnifix are your match one set one winners right there incredibly impressive coming out well executed gameplay and they say scissors you can hold that l instead of the trophy don't celebrate too early it's the world cup creative finals every game is worth so much money as well so much prize so to take a victory off the bat you have to be feeling great and that was your fan fave to pick i mean they had everything going in they're incredibly confident but they had to make sure they were able to get it. You can see the last few moments. They already boxed themselves up after clearing out the Funky Fighters, who were the only other contestants. The Funky Fighters actually also passed the Fish Fam in the last moment, which is huge in terms of not only the prizing, but what will end up being potentially a llama in the end. That's right. That is right. Loving this replay right there. The let's goes. The energy is real. You can clearly see the excitement. That was a great game to watch. It's fantastic. Honestly, I love Sky Station Showdown so much because I think there's a level of depth there, right? Everything is wood, so you're able to like kind of hit through it, and the Infinity Blade cuts through all of it right away. But the Infinity Blade wielder doesn't have the ability to build, needs the support from his teammates. So you saw the people who were roaming in packs of three and four incredibly successful. Yeah, it was kind of unfortunate the Cuddle Crew was like slaying legit so many elims but not a lot of points and that's because play that split game it's not gonna work out you have to convert it into control it is a control the point game mode and if you're not doing that the other players are going to be doing that as you saw right there and what was unfortunate then for the fish fam is they got contested twice in a row right after and just couldn't get reestablished. they couldn't group together in those long spawn lines like you were talking about i mean they could be painful yeah, you know, I was I was rooting for Raven's Revenge, man. I might have to jump on the Llama Record Company whoa, whoa, bandwagon. Whoa, whoa. Bandwagon? In? Really? <laughs> one match? Just one, dude. I'm one match? That, that was quick. All right, well, he jumps on the bandwagon. We're going to jump on over to Pookie, who has an interview for us. Thank you so much, guys. I am here down on the arena floor with our champions here. We have the Llama Record Company. Now, have any of you ever played this? Let's go to you first. Uh, yeah, we had a few training sessions yesterday and we were totally dominating the game mode. So, I mean, we are by far the best team here. And um, right now, we feel very confident, yeah. Well, you certainly played like you came a little bit from behind there. So your strategy was kind of like to get those points uh, that are slower occurring at the very beginning and then kind of go into the middle and kind of start dominating near the end. Who made that call? Um, I mean, that was pretty much me, yeah. Like, we know that at seven minutes, like, the middle just opens up and you you get, like, 12 points a second instead of three. So, uh, yeah, we decided to work on that. We weren't that good at first, but um, we got a strat going. So, uh, yeah, it went pretty good. Speaking of strategy, are you going to carry that into the later games? Are you going to change it up? We're just going to do the same thing. Hopefully no one follows us. I mean, now all of your competitors have heard you say that, so we're gonna, we might have to discuss strategy a little bit when the microphone gets turned off. Now, finally, uh, for you over here, how does it feel being here, playing in front of this massive audience? Uh, it feels amazing, like it's just a dream coming through. Thank you, and for you over here, you've traveled all of this way to just be here, be at the World Cup. Is it surreal? How do you feel about it? It's an experience, it's, it's really nice. It's yeah, and we love Spando. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we'll talk about that. I, you guys got to educate me on that. I'm not sure what that is. Thank you guys so much. Congratulations on taking the first game. Castro, back up to you.
Thank you so much, Llama, Record Co., Hand of Blood, Spenos, Alex, JJ, and Carnifex taking the very first match of the creative finals, the first match on this stage. I mean, it was an impressive format. They clearly had a strategy they wanted to execute on. It took them a little bit to get there, but over the course of the game, they were consistently accruing points. Yeah, I should have known last night they were going to do good. Saw them all in the hotel lobby. They were hanging out literally as a crew. One of the only creative teams that I saw sticking together like a squad. Should have put my money on it. Like I said, bandwagon. It took less <laughs> than one match in an interview, and he was like, oh, yeah, I'm fully on board. I'm no so problem. convinced. Man. It's all good. This set has been so exciting. I mean, who are you looking out for? Who can contest them? And what do you think the next step is to shut them down? They say, hey, we have a game plan. We're going to do the same thing. And I agree. If it's not broke, don't fix it. Like, stick to that if you're going to keep winning. But what do the other teams do to now make them uncomfortable? How do you go challenge them? I mean, honestly, we saw a lot of that team play out of the Fish Fam, right? You wait for your Infinity Blade wielder to come up and then get the team to back them up. You have to work together. And, and remember, when you catch an elimination, you get uh, mats for it so it can help you build. Yes, mats and the health back, but the first match is done. The second match is kicking off right now, and we will have a pretty good idea of where we're going. I'm excited to see if they can repeat, and now the second match is underway, and right away you can see some players sprinting out, some opting to take some hunting rifle shots as Lachlan grabs that Infinity Blade and goes straight up. And you can see you can actually make it to the top if you hit the vent, jump, and then jump again. Two jumps right away. Fish fam and chicken, uh, chicken contenders. Black Earth. God, awful. Chicken, chicken champions. Chicken apologies. Tenders, chicken. What? Are you trying the to eat some tender defender, Let's chicken go. tenders. I know. My fault. <laughs> All right, here we are. So this time around, the Sunshine Soldiers actually managed to get some points off the bat. Very good for them. But Little Whip Warriors, same thing we saw before. How to take, you know, a little bit of, of the first big step here. I mean, and Ninja, it knows those jumps. He's able to get around incredibly efficient up to the top right away. But the early tack fights coming out. Tomoya able to ruin that one there. But then Tyler trades it right back out and what really is important here is about establishing control as a team you want to stay together and just get your momentum rolling as ninja goes up followed quickly by the little whip warriors ninja goes first gets one elam gets two elam as they swarm from both sides so ninja was up two from the back one from the front that was a very well coordinated retake love how they did that and now they're all holding it together kaz holding down the back side keeping these players off the ramp but it's gotaga squad who's coming up the top here it's chappy and gotaga dives right on up into it and doesn't matter, he just gets taken right down. This is what you need to do here. Six, six eliminations already coming out from them. Taldak with one, Kaz on four, and then two for Ninja with the Infinity Blade as Taldak is immediately spraying down shots, making it just a little bit more difficult. But boom, there come the hunting rifle shots, and Taldak is taking shots as well. Out of builds and needs to back up and use his team there, and Gotaga goes straight up. Oh, they need some builds for their backside because they are getting sniped straight out of that spawn point there. It's Raven's Revenge who they're just kind of gatekeeping at the moment, right? Look at Chappie's like, dude, I can't even go up right now because the team is up there. It was a good challenge and he did some damage, but Ninja was all over it. Now already up to four Elims, opening up a 60 point lead, but have to keep an eye on the other parts of the map as the chicken champions are doing their best to hold the top but get pushed out. Kaz finally gets taken down but five elims on his first life there as Ninja challenges Magma. Will he be able to clean that one up? Yes, and he, he does. does. But Chappie's on the other side. Slam goes down right away but now we're over on board with your match one winners, the Llama Record Co. And they're already slaying out as well. 12 elims for them but zero on Hand of Blood which is actually efficient Assuming he doesn't need the health, will have the sword reject going through, but he can't use the builds, right? So yeah, other he, people need them. He can't build. He also can't get hit right now, so he needs to be careful because he is one shot away from getting taken out here. But someone dies right on up. He has to put that pressure down, and it's the chicken champion to make a quick end of him. And it's their turn to start accruing points, but no. Chicken champion leader goes down there. Good attempted defense from Carnifex. Was able to trade out one, but now we have two swords up top. Gotaga and Lachlan just trying to beat each other up, and Gotaga comes out the winner of that one. Other Cuddle Crew team does pick it up there. Just remember, it's three points when you're standing in the circle. Uncontested, it has to be the VIP in there. When we hit seven minutes, there is the fourth circle that is 12 points per second. Yeah, this is definitely very intense for Tomaya here, who again has no health. The Funky Fighters are trying to get that dominant lead they had in that game one. Can they get it? Ooh, knows he's on camera there. Gives a little 
little bit of a taunt. And uh-oh, is he gonna challenge? No, nope. stays back, says, you know what? Points are more important right now. He's just focusing in on the points here. And you can see the Funky Fighters trying to prevent that ramp coming up. It's very efficient to just immediately, as soon as you come out, have two team members ramp up into the left or up into the right so you can get up to the first level. However, Infinity Blade will break that in one shot and you have a ton of rifle ammunition. All of these guys being maxed out on ammo. Let's see here. All These are all the spawn points. You can actually see the banners hanging. So you know if you really want to focus in and kind of shut down a team, you totally can. And Llama Lords are not doing great this game. No, and this was the double jump I talked about. Ninja goes straight up. That's the first Elam. He's going to be able to point his camera, go up, and challenge as soon as the team decides. But instead, going to save that jump to be more impactful. Raven's Revenge is trying to get pushed out right here. Gotaga and crew doing everything they can. But Taldok is going up the back. Chappie gets taken down for Ninja's eighth Elam. And he jukes him out, going straight back up top. Gotaga, does he have the health to take it? First swing comes through, and Ninja goes down. Yeah, he just needed another Elam to put him back in the game. You got to get that siphon bonus. You don't get the heals. It's really rough, even with the Infinity Blade to heal up, because, you know, the heal time is kind of slow. It's very slow. It's, you can see the tick going up there. It's not something that you're going to be able to rely on, particularly when other players are getting the siphon off. If they're the ones trading out the shots, they can quickly change HP. And those are long animations. But look at the challenge. The three different teams going up, and now it's just the Fish Fam and the Kudapu Lachlan doing everything he can. Zan goes down, but tries to create a little bit of space, eats the headshot from Suzuhu, and disengages. Huddle Crew finally getting a couple points here. It's been pretty rough for them so far on this map here you can see this struggle just a bit the story has definitely been ninja's supreme dominant so far he's doing pretty good right here and even with no health says you know what i'm not gonna give away three points might as well go for it he was so close yeah you can see him calling out the whites there on the sword knowing they only need a couple more shots to get it as we switch back on over to the cuddle crew who've established himself there but are still struggling to kind of get the points the first time we're really seeing them all together but clyde Tex immediately gets ripped from the spawn yeah lachlan's team needs to represent there they are. They're finally starting to score it up. He's got a couple of eliminations. You can see X Sandy here. A 16 Elim, so definitely has some slayers there. Yo, I, they need to figure out their game plan because they're getting Elims and putting things together. They have solid numbers. They're just mm -hmm. not getting the right hill time. Maybe it's go somewhere else. You don't always have to go to the point that's directly in front of you. Go contest someone or maybe just go mess with somebody at their spawn. Delay them so they don't rotate towards you. Like a number of times, as you said before, you can see where people are spawning. If you want to go deny a team, you can send somebody to deny them. Just know that player is coming back over and over and over with likely more resources than you. Every single time. And look at this. The Little Wit Warriors approaching that 400 point mark. And in just one minute, that new point capture D will be unlocked in the center of the map. And while they have a solid lead right now, just under 150 points that disappears in the blink of an eye that's about 15 seconds uncontested in that middle hill that's just how valuable it is but we saw the shift in gameplay that happened everybody tunneled it right away and then the uh fish fan were able to get back up but after that kind of cycled it back in and the center point became the focus and where the win was taken and right now llama record co you said they were struggling at the start they're doing fine right now in second place monster they're, they're definitely creeping their way right back up they're about to hit that 300 point mark there here we have svenos just on the point by himself right now waiting for hannah blood to come on up hopefully and again no surprise ninja and his crew has Himself another point. And the way they've angled this build is brilliant because if you come up the steps, you're pushing into somebody's right hand, and on the other side, you're blocked off as Ninja then just drops down Stuart 0 and he gets picked up with the alley from Gotaga as Gotaga comes up with Magma. One, two, three. Ravens out of nowhere, but the Little Whip Warriors don't care. They're cutting down in three, two, one. You can already see MSYB is down there. Alex JJ down there. Carnifex down there. Ooh. They're trying to set up control right away. Lava Red. Could go, but the impulses are raining from everywhere. Hand of Blood really tried to get in there early, too, as did every other captain, but it was to no surprise not effective. 
and you can see that the chicken champions are committing to the three points right now. Little Whip Warriors as well, while contention is happening down in the bottom. No Infinity Blade wielder is in there, but the steady climb of points coming at the chicken champions is going to be beneficial. But also, just like that, Rama Rekiko is a little bit off the pace. They need to get the center uncontested. However, this game, they have a lot more attention on that. Yeah, but look, Fish Bam's doing the same thing they did last time, just slowly, or actually, sorry, the Chicken Champions have adopted the strategy. Fish Bam are doing it too, you oh, can yeah, see, yeah, they're getting they're three points up. there. So there's two teams who are just hanging out on top, no problem. All the other teams are not contesting. Raven's Revenge has control of the uh, of one of the other side. So every hill is occupied and full controlled by a team, not being contested. Everyone else is looking at the middle. Yeah, it's actually working. The Chicken Champions are right behind the Little Whip Warriors right now. They're almost in the lead here. They just have to kind of hold it down. Honestly, the Little Whip Warriors have to identify what platform they're on and go take it. Well, and this is this is what happened to them last time. They yes. kind of had a good lead and then stalled out. You need a game plan with the middle platform goes, and you either need to stick to it or, depending on the score, be adaptive. Because right now, Chicken Champions, they're being fine. As long as somebody isn't controlling the middle, they're going to be able to have that lead, and you can send one person to just throw impulses down there over and over. Just be annoying from yep. the top. Your scissors. Six Elans looking good on this other point, and now he's in the top three. They weren't even close before, but just by slowly, consistently gaining points here, you can see they're breaking those thresholds slowly but surely, and Little Whip Warriors are no longer losing. Yeah, Little Whip Warriors actually unseated the Chicken Champions there from their control point. They're taking it over. They're trying to get it back, so that's a battle right now. But the Funky Fighters out of nowhere, Middle Hill, and all of a sudden, just like that, into first place, going to pass 700 in just a second. Nope, get pushed out, and now they're back in there. Tomoya going off right now. Lumberwreck and Co. down there and trying to push him out, and you can see they're contesting it over and over again, but they're not getting the points they saw last game, falling off the pace. Yep. They are slowly just battling for this number one. Chicken Champs kind of overtake it now as well. The Fish Fam, not too far either. Everyone's so close here in the top four. Don't forget, if you take a victory, you win 55,000 bonus in prize. And right now, Suzu is going off. 21 eliminations. And right as I say that, apologies for the cast of Chris, but 21 eliminations from the Belgian. He loves practicing, practicing his builds and creative and is showing it off here with really clever defensive cone edits up there. But right now, Little Whip Warriors are going at it. Tomoya gets the better ninja and he gets cut down. But Funky Fresh Riders then get sent all over the place thanks to the impulses from above. I love this strat. He kind of sends out for a second there just to kind of catch a breather, see if his teammates come back. But unfortunately, the timing was just a bit off. And the Llama Record Company now control the middle point for how long we will find out here as this is their comeback story because they need these points desperately here. Hand of Blood still alive just long enough to get a couple of more points. But Scissors is playing the long game here. Just eating away at the threshold here at the top. So Suzu isn't grouped with them. I'm assuming they've sent him to just go either watch middle and be their middle control. No, he just came up the backside. There you go. And just like go flying at people as the Cuddle Coup come up in a very well coordinated pinch. Three from the side and Scissors gets taken down. But the Funky Fresh. Oh no. No. no they got one stopped. Point. <laughs> well, one point. Yo, so if you are the Fish Fam or Little Whip right now, you have to send somebody to stop them. If that Infinity Blade wielder gets out of spawn and goes anywhere for one second, they will win. Somebody has to deny him. It is all on Tomoya. Anywhere he goes, it doesn't have to be the one near him. If he touches the middle, a singular uncontested second will be the victory for them. These are the final moments here, Sundown. Look at him. He's got a slight grin on his face. He wants to do it. Is this the point that he's going to make it? Here it goes. He takes the stake. He does miss. He's going back for it now. His team's up there. All he has to do Don't is sweat out. just a couple of times. Can he win this straight? And he does not. And as you watch, check the points on the right-hand side. Nobody is climbing up by the 12s. And as and the one. Llama Record Go gets the control there, but Little Whip contesting them right back. Funky Fresh Tomoya will be back and looking to find it, but the contestant is going for the middle. Here's Tomoya. He knows just a second in there. Uncontested will oh, be ninja. enough. Can he get it? Oh, no, he, he doesn't. He got knocked down. The impulse grenade at the second he landed. Knocks everyone out. No one's in there. Can he find it? And he does. That's it. His feet touch the ground. The impulse doesn't go off. Tomoya takes it for the Funky Fighters with some brilliant teamwork.
what an intense end game to get taken out at 999 points. Really, anything can happen in those final moments. Now, I'm telling you, I love Sky Station Showdown. Can't wait for more people to start playing. And the funky fresh fighter right there celebrating with his team. You can see them just so excited, so happy. Let's take a look at this final replay. Now, again, we talked about it. The impulse is being a great denial tool. Right there as the player goes down, sent back out, goes in, but misses the jump monster. He almost had the flashiest ending ever. Just kind of diving in and wrapping it all up. But it was just good enough. Like you said, he only had to stay there for a, a bit. And even with the impulse bumping him out, that's it. And I mean, you saw the impulse explosion the second after going off. The team's doing everything they can, but it was not enough to shut down the funky fighters. Tomoya, Kutu, Huzi, Drasius, incredibly well done to take the second match of the first set at the Creative Finals. Yeah, you know what? I am a funky fighter. right after yay the next team who won I'm, I'm their fan but no great performance coming out from them and it's one thing we talked about right the adaption that happens from match to match Bomber Rekiko was like oh we're gonna stick to our game plan that didn't work out yeah it really didn't in those end game situations they really just kind of crept up and and snuck and took the entire competition they did and they were able to make sure that they got time in the middle when Little Whip and that team weren't able to get there. Llama Rekiko and Little Whip were going at it constantly. Funky Fresh were just able to step there. Yep, and that's just kind of how it happens. You know, now they find themselves one step closer to taking the Silver Llama for this set. Because remember, at the end of the day, these are just the games, but they have to take the entire set. Now the pressure is on. The pressure is on, but the Funky Fighters have a little bit of pressure off of their shoulders if they know they got that top spot. What do you got for us? Thank you so much, Sundown. I am down here with our second game winners here. Congratulations, guys, first off and foremost. Now, I, I got to talk about the moment where you guys were just sitting. You needed one point left to win. What was that like? Oh, it was, I was really nervous. Like, I was just imagining, like, it, losing with one point would be terrible. So we just tried to get one more point and we did it, so. It was definitely devastating. I was screaming in my seat. I heard all the fans in the audience screaming for you guys as well. So going into the next games, what do you guys think your strategy is gonna be? Are you gonna, are you gonna keep doing what you're doing? Are you gonna mix it up a little bit? I think doing what we're doing is fine because first game we got second place, second game we won. So yeah, we're gonna try and do the same thing and hopefully win again and hopefully have more than a one point buffer, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. For sure, now just coming over here to you, what has it been like to be here at the Fortnite World Creative Cup, just playing in front of this audience, you know, hearing everybody cheer for you guys to win, what is that like? Um, it's fun, that's the only thing I can think of, it's fun. Because you compete against everyone else, meet your uh, teammates and just have fun. Yeah, and have you guys had a chance to play together before? Is this your first time playing together as a team? Uh, I don't feel right, sorry. Is it your first time playing together as a team? Yeah, it's the first time. Well, you guys definitely make it look super easy. Thank you all so much for being here and talking to you. I'm gonna let you get back, get your synergy back together. Sundown and Monster, back to you up at the desk. Thank you so much, Pookie, and the Funky Fresh Fighters. I mean, their game plan has been solved. Second place, first place. Now, I, I understand why you might want to bandwagon a little bit, but I'm still gonna hang out with my Llama Record Co. But I want to talk about the changes we saw from match one to match two in terms of gameplay, and was it what you expected? Uh, definitely not what I expected. I thought Gotaga's team was going to come out here and crush it right behind the Fish Fam, but as you can see, huge upsets. Anything can kind of go either which way, and I mean, talk about like kind of beginner's luck or something like that. You just put a team together. They didn't practice. They're just coming out here and wiping players up, so... A lot of talented players here at the Creative Finals. I mean, Tomoya talked about it. He was like, hey, when I pick my team, very confident there with their death run ability. Want to see what they do in the elimination race during World Run, but doing incredibly well so far at Sky Station. That's going to be a confidence booster because if you can get the Silver Llama there and you're confident in your ability on the World Run, you're set. 
Yeah, you're just one step closer. So with the first place and the second place, they're clearly having a good set so far here at the uh, Sky Station Showdown. Yeah, it's been very well done from them, but it's still anybody's game. Don't forget, the winner of the Silver Llama is the one who has accumulated the most prize money across, which equates roughly to placements, but you don't get punished if you're placing in that bottom half. Fourth through eighth, all received. life-changing prize money on the line and i mean we've seen the difference 10 seconds in that center circle 120 right there it makes a huge difference but enough of us breaking it down we're gonna throw it outside to bala because he's gonna show us what's up with the tactics bala what do you got for us i'm out here at the fan festival and i don't have a bandwagon here but maybe after this set i'll have to hop on somewhere with monster we got a ton of awesome action i've been watching it and I have to show you guys what went down in that first and second games. It was awesome. First off, the Llama Record Company started off with an amazing take, cohesiveness on the point. Every single time they went up here, they were going from two sides, two angles, and the sword approached at the center, but made sure that he was the most important person not to go down. You see there, Hand of Blood and his teammates all backing up. He's going to have an engagement on the side. These sword fights are really easy for him to just mow it down. But immediately as he realizes his teammates are up on the point, about to get up, about to push the ramp, he comes up from the side, slices and dices. But meanwhile, they ended up falling down the leaderboard. If you look at right now where they're at, they're only in second place. Fish Fam was ahead of them. But all while Scissors was dancing and talking all the smack, telling his teammates to try to get the crowd involved, it was Llama Record Company making the plan, making the play to get in towards the center. Absolutely amazing take in the center on this first game. Led to Hand of Blood staying in that point and absolutely dominating with the super point there. Guys, two matches down on Sky Station Showdown. One more to go. We'll see where Monster lands at the end of this because I will maybe join you on that bandwagon. Guys, take it back. I mean, it's that's starting to get a little awful crowded, man. Real quick, you guys hopping on those bandwagons. But as you said, there is one more regular Sky Station Showdown match in this set. We will see it again later in the remix version during the Golden Games. And as I, it's been so fun to watch the difference of players, who's able to be very strong with the Infinity Blade, how the pinches end up coming. And now in this third match, it's only going to get better from these guys. Yeah, I definitely want to see some more of that kind of team work happening here. And why not just hop right into a game right now, right? Let's go see some more action here because this last game of the set is loading in right now. Yes, and this will be the final match of this set. Set one after this, a Silver Llama will be awarded and we are in the match. It's Sky Station Showdown, set one about to be over and here we go. All right, gotta love those players just kind of beelining out. And don't forget, you know exactly who your neighbors are. You know who is to your left and to your right because you can see the banners and the designs on their spawns. And a nice look at our captains right there. And right away, you can see a number of teams finding ramp paths where they're able to use their first five materials. Next five, Sword does a double jump. Boom. Right to the top. Chicken champions excellently executed. Yeah, this is this is what matters right here is stopping the funky fighters because clearly they have been doing some good work together as a team so far. Tomoya is off to the races here though, sent to run away. Can the Sunshine Soldiers come back? Can the Cuddle Crew make a big appearance for themselves? Because they can really shake it up here. Any it can go any which way depending on who has the most uh, victories really in the best placement. Yeah, so currently you will see the fact that they're able to be pushed off.